Once more, a very good morning. And I'm going to start off with ruffling some feathers. If I tell you that we, which includes you, are selfish in our relationships, <coughs> we look at relationships the way we look at a business transaction. When I am spending my hard-earned money, I want the best of products, I want the highest discount, I want free delivery, I want service warranty, I want everything. Without that, I'm not going to go ahead with this transaction. That's what we do with money transactions. If I tell you that we do that with relationships, you are probably going to get angry with me. You may say, yeah, Ali, you may be doing it. That's up to you, but I am not like that. I give unconditional love. I am committed to my nearest and dearest, be it, let's say, a parent, be it a child, be it a spouse, be it whatever. When it comes to these people who are so important to me, there is no question of you know, a transaction type of thing or expecting something in return. Okay. You don't have to take my word for it. All my request is to sometimes just sit and think over it. When I am going on repeating this for a long time, the same way as I've been talking about loneliness and nobody agrees with uh, uh, me. And now you've seen what's happened in the pandemic. In fact, you have not seen the worst of the emotional turmoil of the pandemic and lockdown is going to come in the days to come, in the years to come, I would say. Anyway, coming to today's uh, topic, before I even talk about you know, how, why we want appreciation, let me first clarify to you this one very important thing that we, you know, are selective in giving our love and building up our relationship. Why is it that a mother who loves her child immensely and wants to give everything, that mother may say, see, this is unconditional love. I love my child so much. I don't want anything in return. There are mothers who may say, I want my child to grow up and look after me in my old age. I'm not that type of person. I'll be very happy looking after myself. I just want my child to get the best of everything, fly out of the nest and enjoy his or her uh, life. So it is unconditional love, right? Okay, fine. Now, if that is the case, you have a child who is not a very obedient child, who is not performing well in studies, who is being a little obstinate, who has got into bad habits. You continue to give unconditional love no? and you show it that way and say that, see, even when my child does not give me anything that I want and is not behaving properly, I'm still giving unconditional love to my uh, child, isn't it? So this proves that, you know, I build relationships this way and this is how I give unconditional love. Okay. Now you have a brother's child or a neighbor's child who's the same age, same background and everything, but very well behaved. And that child goes goes out of the way to be nice to you. Not only is that child very nice to his own parents and teachers or whoever, but is also goes out of the way to be nice to you. And you're very touched. You say, look at this child, how nice, how, what a wonderful boy he is. See how much he does this. The other day he did this, this, this gesture. He was sensitive to my needs and he came and inquired, how are you feeling now? But when it turns out to giving your love, you give it 90% to your child and maybe 10% to this child. You still want to give 90% of your so-called unconditional love to your child. Why? There are two children of the same background, same age, same accessibility to you. One is very well behaved very lovable and also making a lot of gestures to be nice to you. But you prefer to give 90% of your love and affection to only your uh, child. So that's what I said. Don't get angry with me. Just keep this thought which I told you in mind that why is it that we do that? Let's see if you find your own answers or someday we will, uh, you know, fix up uh, the thing. That takes me to the next step. Very often when I ask people, why should somebody love you? Can you list out your traits, qualities that makes you think that people should love you because I've got these, these qualities. 
some of them do come out with very good, very balanced and very understandable qualities that, yes, this is what I do. This is how I behave with people. That's why I think that I deserve to have love. But also remember, there are many of us who say there can't be reasons for being loved. No, the whole purpose of love is defeated. If you say I love because of this, love has to be unconditional. I want people to love me as is, where it is. I am me. Take it or leave it. And I want people to love me for uh, that. I don't know what is their success rate, how much actual love and affection they are getting. But let me tell you that in a number of cases, I come across people who come and say, this relationship went bad. I wanted love from this person, but I didn't get it. Or I got love from this person for some time. And after that, that person broke off or is no longer being nice to me the way we used to be earlier. And at that time, do you introspect and realize that it is because maybe I did not look into what were the traits, qualities, gestures, habits of mine, which would have made this person continue to love me and to have a loving relationship. So that is something that I, again, now I've done this earlier, but I want you to please reflect over it as we move forward into today's uh, topic, which I have been observing for a very, very long time. And once in a while, I feel that if you can just spend a little time on introspecting and discussing, I'm open to any suggestions, any corrections, mind you. And that's the reason why, as you know, this particular program, I speak only for half an hour, take a quick break with a cup of tea and then get back to only answering questions or commenting on your comments, agreeing, disagreeing with whatever you have agreed and disagreed. So that's what makes this Saturday session very, very lively for me at least. And I'm sure those of you who have stuck around and are logging in every Saturday, there must be something that you are getting out of it. So I'm thankful to you that you continue to be committed and loyal to this little Saturday program. Let's look for uh, you know, better and better topics. I'm always open to any suggestions. Please send us any suggestions that you have about topics. Please fix it up three, four weeks in advance. But beyond that, if you say that, yeah, this is something which is important to me, why don't we have a discussion? I'm definitely open to looking at it. And with that, let me come to the specific topic of uh, today. Why is it that we look for appreciation only from specific and selected uh, people? Why is it that we want only from so these type of uh, uh, people what, you know, even if somebody says that there are so many people who love me, care for me, all these things, I still keep going back to this thing of I want love, appreciation, acknowledgement from somebody. You may have had occasions where, let's say, a uh, lady, a homemaker, mother, executive, whatever she is, she tells her, her best friend, you know, I uh, changed my hairstyle or I bought a very nice dress and I put a lot of thought to it and I felt that this would be the ideal uh, thing for me. And after a lot of consideration, a lot of evaluation, when I finally changed over to this new dressing or this new uh, hairstyle, all my friends started appreciating uh, uh, me. So much so, I was going out of my apartment and in the lift, one lady who hardly knows me, who just lives in the other end of the uh, building, she said, oh, you're looking so nice in this, 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 out of the blue. And I'm sure there was no reason for her to flatter me. No? She hardly knows me. We have just been on smiling or high hello terms for a long time. But she stopped me and she mentioned this. When I went to such such place, that's what people told me. My friends told me this, etc. Then I asked my husband, how is this new hairstyle or how is this new dressing style? What do you feel? He looks at me and says, oh, you've changed it, is it? I didn't notice. That itself hits me. This person cannot even notice something so obvious. Okay, doesn't matter. Okay, I have done it. Now look and tell me. What do you feel about it? 
and he comes out with some vague thing no i think that would have been suited better or you know that hairstyle or the dressing of mrs so and so that is something which is very appreciable and that is really nice and i feel like clobbering him the question that i want you to ask yourself or i want that particular lady who told this to you to ask why is it so important that you want that appreciation acknowledged uh, meant or i would even say validation from that one particular person or that one or two uh, people left right and center i come across people who keep telling me things like you know i work so hard i am so talented i have done this gesture i have achieved this and everybody around me praises me they all say what a great person you are doing such good work you are doing this and that everyone except my family members in my family nobody bothers they just don't care what i am doing okay for whatever may be their reason i do understand that you need their appreciation because they are the nearest and dearest to you i'll even come in a few minutes to talk about how we can make them you know think uh, uh, about it shake them up and say no this is what i am doing do you know that i work so hard do you know that i get appreciation from this 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 uh, um, uh, places but supposing it doesn't come why is it so important to me that is my question here i would also make an exception if it is somebody who is like let's say your guru or your teacher or your master or your boss so if you say that when i work so hard i want appreciation from my boss because i am achieving so much for my department or my organization so if he acknowledges then i get that boost i can understand if it is in general life matters i have this guru or this mentor or this person whom i look up to and he is the knowledgeable person he has taught me so many things so i want his acknowledgement that yes you are doing good work or yes you are talented or you are achieving this i can still understand but very often like i gave you the example right in the beginning of my wanting to love only my child and not my neighbor's child or my brother's child the same thing applies over here it is only because that person is important to me that person may not know head or tail about it the husband may not understand hair styles or dressing uh, styles at all and yet why is it that this person is craving for that appreciation or that acknowledgement only from that uh, person and what i want to caution you about is having a desire to be appreciated that it means a lot to me if my father appreciate this or my spouse you know acknowledges that i am achieving in this or whatever some close pe uh, people fine if that is the case i can still uh, understand but my concern is that very often it can turn into an obsession like i gave the example i am moving around in social circles everybody is appreciating or praising me for what i have done but my thoughts are only with that one or two people from whom i want the appreciation even then somebody is appreciating somebody is being nice to me somebody is acknowledging me i am hardly even able to enjoy that appreciation or acknowledgement that i am getting for the simple reason that my thoughts are all the time going back to that one person from whom i am looking for that uh, thing i'll give you a real life example which drives the point home i met this uh, gentleman who was referred to me for counseling he was in his mid 50s very capable person good looking also handsome even at that age he was very smart and good looking and a great achiever right from his academics to his professional life very stable very sort of you know responsible person steadily went up the uh, ladder was doing exceedingly well he had a very loving caring wife he had a couple of children who were growing up very well and who were themselves becoming achievers slowly at that satisfaction of having brought up a couple of children very uh, um, well financially reserves savings were good 
his relationship with everybody in office in society was very uh, uh, good he had his hobbies he was a spiritually inclined person so he used to indulge in whatever spiritual enlightenment all that he had that satisfaction but it was amazing as he kept talking whatever he did he wanted appreciation only from his mother anything that he used to take up the first thought that would strike him is will my mother appreciate this will my mother acknowledge this and praise me for it it had so happened that he had this ambition of building a nice independent house for himself he was living in apartments all his life he bought a plot of land that layout he waited for it to get filled up and come out beautifully other houses came up it was a lovely little layout and everything was going fine then with a lot of saved up money and everything he built a house exactly as his dream house and in that he made not a room but a separate section for his mother a veranda a room and a tash toilet even a little kitchenette in case she wants to make her own tea or something he made all that even though his mother was not living with him she was living with his elder brother most of the time she used to come for some few weeks at a time and go back but he made this whole thing only for the mother showed it to her right from the plan stage to the end and then finally the house was ready and when he did whatever the grow provision and he had this stream of people coming in and everybody without exception praising him his mother came in and said yeah you had shown me the plans at that time it looked as though it's good but it's not all that great somehow now that i'm seeing it is completed doesn't look so great and you know it never it does not matter that's uh, with the way your brother made his house his house is fantastic one statement and all his joy for that house was over when he came and he started opening out and we had long discussions it turned out that right from his childhood his mother used to compare him to his elder brother and somehow his elder brother was an achiever He used to do well in academics. He used to do well in whatever uh, it is. So whenever he would do a, anything, whenever he would achieve anything, the mother would immediately point out and say, "Your brother is better." And he had lost his father, by the way. The mother was the only parent, single parent. So whatever he would do, he was craving for acknowledgement and appreciation from his mother. and it had become such a habit with her to compare him to his brother that she would always bring in this thing why don't you copy your brother's style why don't you do like what your brother did ma i bought this new car and you know it's so nice yeah but your brother's car why didn't you buy the same thing you know his car is so much better and as i said at 55 years of age this man could not enjoy life because he wanted that appreciation from his mother and his mother was for various reasons being stingy and not giving it to him and more so comparing him with his uh, brother this is an example i want to give you this is an extreme example but i want you to understand how it becomes an obsession and the most important uh, thing is that when this happens we stop giving attention and importance to others for example uh, that man may have had a sister or a spouse or whoever it is who's going on appreciating him who's genuinely giving him positive strokes and saying hey you <coughs> worked so hard for this you have achieved this i'm so happy for you i really feel you have done wonders but it would mean nothing to them so one important thing message i want to get across today is that there are so many people around us who contribute to our well being the question is because i want appreciation from only one person because i feel incomplete without the acknowledgement and the praise from that person how many others am i neglecting and that leads us to a situation where we keep getting more and more obsessed with this one person alienating ourselves from the others 
and feeling that, see, nobody cares, nobody loves, nobody is nice to me. Here I am putting in so much effort, but I'm getting nothing in uh, return. See how it becomes a vicious uh, uh, cycle. I'll demonstrate this to you in a very simple man manner, maybe even a silly manner. But just bear with me, we'll do this little exercise right now. 46 years back, we had a movie called Shole. After that, maybe 2,000, 5,000 Bollywood movies must have come. If you take Sandalwood and all the other language movies of India, maybe tens of thousands of movies have come. But Shole still remains one of the iconic blockbusters which people quote. Even today when I say a simple thing like Kitne Admi The you know that I'm talking sure there. If I say, Aadhe idhar jao, Aadhe udhar jao, baki mere piche ao, and we all laugh at uh, it, and we know exactly that this is the jailer who was a cartoon in that uh, movie. So, one movie, 46 years, it has stood its test of time and is still doing well. Who contributed to the success of that movie? Who did things for that movie which made it so iconic and so outstanding. I want to do that brainstorming right now with you. So let's take, for example, Sanjeev Kumar. What a role he had, you know, that man without hands and Thakur and whatever he was. So you will agree with me that Sanjeev Kumar was a great contribution. Then somebody will say, Nahi yaar. Amitabh Bachchan's role was fantastic. So don't forget Amitabh Bachchan. Yes, he played a great role. Somebody will say, I'm a great fan of Dharminder, you know. He was one who did fantastic work. Like that, can you contribute? I want to hear from uh, you. Yes, Pranati says, Asrani. Yasmin said, I watched Shole last night. Good, Yasmin. That's really good. Yes, Yasmin says, team of actors. But I'm talking about individuals. I want to know who are the individuals. Was it Hema Malini who was outstanding? Was it that old lady who plays Hema Malini's Maushi? You know, did she contribute to that? Yes, Niti says, Basanti, the Hema Malini. Maushi, don't forget her. Remember A.K. Hangal, that old blind uh, priest who is going to the mosque and he makes such a touching statement. Jante ho, insan ke par sabse bada boj kya hota hai, uski jawan bete ki lash, Maine, mere bete ki lash uthai hai, his son is killed by the decoits. And he says, I have lifted the, you know, dead body of my son. That is the greatest boj or load that a human being can carry. One statement and it touched hearts. Could it be the singers, including our uh, you know, R.D. Burman, who sang one song in his inimitable uh, style, Mehbooba, Mehbooba. So go on. The list just goes on and on and on. Ramesh Sippi, Anupama, you are right. And of course, who can forget Samba? I'm told that poor man died. You know, what a wonderful actor uh, he was. Gabbar Singh, absolutely right. Yes, yeah, Somya says Jaya Bachchan's role was so beautiful. In silence, she spoke so much. And definitely Javed and Salim, who wrote the script. What an amazing script it was. Somya says, Nehubba is my favorite song. And Helen, she is wow. Yeah, we should not forget Helen. Small role, but she stood out. Okay. The list goes on and on and on. I've done this brainstorming with a lot of people. We already have 14, 15 names. It can go on to 20, 30, 40. I would like you to remind you of one more 
person who played a role in contributing to the success of this movie and that was dhanno the horse the mare rather have you seen how that dhanno was in fact if you uh, you know reach out and uh, uh, you know uh, get the details of uh, shole movie you will be told how well that mare was trained because if that mare had given problems and had not behaved properly so many scenes would have got spoiled and we would not have been able to complete right from the first time at the railway station when you know these two guys come and they get into the tanga and uh, basanti is talking all the time and dhanno is the one who is taking the uh, tanga for, forward all these are people who have contributed yes 130 crore indians contributed because they liked it see again i come back to the same point there are hundreds and hundreds of movies why do we go and see shole why do we see it even now i'm talking about that so why i brought this up point is that even if you sit for half an hour list out you will probably miss out dhanno that is one classic example i wanted to give you that we have people like this around us who appreciate us who care for us who value us remember that that's very important and yet we ignore them because we have all the time focused on that one or two uh, people whom we are all the time you know hoping for their love affection and appreciation and if you find yourself caught in that trap where you are realizing that only this person's appreciation only if that person says uh, uh, something yes number 16 sunita has put up as dialogues but i'm talking about individuals who played a role including not a human being but an animal like dhanno so when you say dialogues it goes back to salim and javed the script writers the story writers so each one of these people i am talking about Oh, Niti mentioned Dhanno immediately after Basanti. Is it fantastic? Fantastic! I didn't notice that. Amazing! Yeah, hats off to Niti and any one of you who thought of uh, Dhanno. It's symbolic. I just wanted to bring in this point to help you to understand. Like I said, that we tend to neglect. Now, okay. So, if you get into this uh, thing, I'd like you to do two exercises. First one is, please list out. immediately after this program gets over or even now in between if you have the time and inclination the names of three people who generally appreciate things that you do who give you little positive strokes who look up to you who value you or who give you that you know feeling that yes you are important in their uh, lives three people at least i'm sure there are many 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 more if you can think of those three and ask yourself do i reciprocate do i value that appreciation or whatever they are giving me it could be somebody as simple as your domestic help who comes and looks up to you and appreciates you and gives you some positive comments and you just laugh and say ah okay okay thank you and all that so i want you to please do that one exercise the other one i want to take you through in just 5 minutes which is how do we overcome this obsession type of uh, thing if i find that all the time i'm craving for attention affection and appreciation only from one or two people it's not good for me so how do i overcome that i'm going to give you a very simple tips like i always uh, do it's up to you to practice and it's up to you how to you know build on uh, those so now we are at the halfway point give me a couple of minutes to have my nice hot cup of tea and those of you who are interested please get a pen and paper or your uh, you know notepad on your phone or whatever it is i'm just going to give you five or six points to you know think over about how to overcome either for yourself or if you know somebody else or even for future that if you tend to slowly go into that uh, thing how do you come out of the so we shall do that immediately after the break and in the break sima is here
to give you a couple of very important announcements from our side. Hi. So the first announcement is that we have a lovely studio here now. Banjara has its own studio, and today we are operating from here. So next time, if you're around, we we'll show you this place. It's really nice on the first floor, right next to the library. So that's one. Of course, DCS classes are running. They are on. And a few more seats left there. So uh, anybody who's interested, we'll be closing admissions shortly. Uh, so for the year and uh, the next uh, uh, thing will start only, the next batch will start only next year in the month of June, July. So if anybody is keen, uh, please uh, reach out. And one thing today I thought I'll point out, uh, or I will rather uh, uh, let you know, is about the career guidance that Banjara does for over three decades now. Uh, Ali personally uh, does, and of course, we have a fabulous team here. So uh, usually, uh, you know, uh, students who are in their ninth, tenth grades, they would like to get a holistic um, uh, career assessment done or just come for a career chat. If you just want to come and uh, uh, you know have a little discussion with the professionals, it's a good idea uh, before you choose a stream. Also, because we uh, do a very long-term uh, thing and we work backwards. Of course, when you come here, uh, you'll get to know. In fact, I have uh, two reports here. If you can see, actually, this is not just for um, you know people who are uh, students who are in their ninth, tenth grade. Also, for others who are looking to restart their career, the second innings, mostly homemakers who uh, kind of, uh, you know, kept their, uh, uh, you know, career on a little pause mode uh, for their family, but now want to really look at uh, starting something that they are passionate about, or uh, even uh, people who have had very fulfilling careers, but, uh, you know, now this, so they retire from a bank, let's say, or the armed forces or something or any corporate job, and they feel that they can still do something productive, something useful, something to reach out to the society for the next 20, 25 years. So why not come and have a chat, have a discussion, career talk, career chat, career guide, absolutely free uh, at Banjara. Uh, and uh, but if you want to get a very holistic kind of assessment done, uh, you know, please uh, let us know in advance. If you want, just come and take a look at this report. You know, this will give you a very good idea about various uh, uh, you know, facets of uh, career and how you can look at it and choose it. So come and uh, meet Anis, Jenny, they'll show you this uh, report and you can uh, uh, take a call or just come simply come take an appointment uh, with Ali and team uh, for a career uh, discussion and chat. So all this is happening here at Banjara and uh, uh, many, many other things. So like I said, DCS today, we have a CCAD uh, valedictory program, the online program, but uh, you know, when we did the uh, online convocation valedictory, they said, no, can we come and collect it in person? We said, yes, why not? So today evening we are having that. So many of the CCAT, the Child and Adolescent Development Program uh, that was running online, they are actually coming here in person and we will uh, have that in the evening. So yes, lots of stuff happening here and back to Ali. Yes. So the last part, and then we will be having a lot of uh, uh, discussion. Uh, yeah, Kirti has already given a very nice point. I'll come back to that in a uh, minute. And Arzu is giving a nice positive stroke to Seema, saying you're looking gorgeous, dear. Yeah. OK. Now, first thing, list out those people about whom you are very, very particular about getting appreciation, acknowledgement, and praise. They will generally be one or two, not more than that, because we are obsessed. We are so particular. We want to belong to those uh, one or two people, right? So when that happens, ask yourself, this is point number one. Why do I want appreciation only from him? Ask yourself that uh, uh, question. What is so important about that? 
person. Why is it that only that person's praise or acknowledgement matters so much to uh, me? Think, rationalize, write down the points. Am I incomplete without him? Is it because he's so critical of me? Like I gave you the example of this man's mother who always used to compare him uh, with his brother. So it became an obsession that one day my mother should say, I am better than my brother. So that is the first one. Second, does his opinion, his appreciation practically help me or affect me in any way? In most cases, you will realize the answer is no. So overall, how does it really help? It's just to make me feel nicer or better, isn't it? Nothing more than uh, that. So keep that in uh, mind. Number three, I mentioned to you, no? Am I losing out on others because of this? When others appreciate me, am I ignoring them or am I just being polite and saying thank you, thank you? And again, craving to get back to this person. So in the long run, what am I losing? However important that one person is, you cannot spend your whole life based on only one uh, person. Keep that very, very strongly in your uh, uh, mind. Then ask the other people who are appreciating you, why they are appreciating. If they say you have this skill or you are good in this or you are doing something, why is it that that is happening? Get a critical review from them. So when they tell you that you are good in this, see your house is good because you did this and you did that. I appreciated this color combination or I saw how you have made this house, you know, weather friendly so that the, in the summer it doesn't eat up so much. When they come out with concretized, uh, you know, backup of their appreciation, then you understand that, yes, I am appreciable. I am doing something right. So even if this person from whom I'm craving does not give me that appreciation, it still doesn't matter uh, to me. Then comes a very important point. Please understand. If you stop craving for that person's appreciation, then you realize that you get it. I've had instances Let's say a homemaker who has sacrificed her whole career and everything else for the sake of her family. Now she picks up some uh, uh, skill. Let's say she is good in playing some musical instrument or singing or whatever art or anything like that. And she takes to it very passionately. Now that children are growing up, I have more time, I'm going to do it. And her husband, instead of appreciating, actually puts her down. What are you wasting your time? Who will listen to your singing? What do you think you will become some great Lata Mangeshkar? Is it what are you trying to do? Why are you wasting your time in doing this? You could have done something better. And she realizes that the more she tries to convey, no, you know, the other day, this is what my friends told me. Or the other day, you know, in my friend's birthday party, they were insistent that I should sing. And when I sang, they were all, oh, they are your friends. They are, they are just trying to flatter you. Forget it. The more she's trying to get appreciation, the more she is being put down. If she can take this step, which is what I'm telling you right now, stop looking for appreciation. Don't even inform him that I got appreciation for my singing or my art or my whatever I'm uh, doing. Continue doing your stuff. The interesting thing is it takes a whole cycle and comes back somewhere. And somebody comes and tells this gentleman, you know, the other day when they had that art exhibition, your wife's painting was standing out among so many painters and so many people stood there and you know that great artist came and he was standing 10 minutes staring at it and says, who is the person who has drawn this wonderful painting? Now when this gentleman hears it from a third person, his whole demeanor changes. Yeah, of course, I am the one who has been uh, encouraging her. I am the one who has been giving her this. I know what this is. I'm glad you saw this. And his demeanor changes. So the less you crave for it, the greater is your chance that you will actually give it. And last point in this tips and techniques is 
don't wait for appreciation from that one important person don't even bother so much about the appreciation you may or may not be getting from others please give yourself positive strokes i think my singing has improved compared to few months back because of my practice i think when i switched over to oil colors and producing much better paintings i think the depth of the colors and the scenery that i made is far far better than what it was just you know a few weeks or few months uh, uh, back i think the social surveys or this thing that i am uh, doing and i am going to this old age home or often age or whatever i am doing i think i am making a difference in the lives of so many people whom nobody cares for so i think what i am doing is much more significant than somebody who goes for a job and earns lakhs of rupees and is praised sky high saying that he is the ceo he is a big shot he is this he is that but i think what i am doing if you can give yourself that positive strokes if you can be the best appreciator genuinely then believe me you will not need the appreciation of other people specifically not this person whose appreciation you have been craving uh, uh, for okay kirti says we appreciate our children for everything good they do is there possibility they get obsessed and look to us parents each time for acknowledging their work i have a very simple answer for that kirti and all the other parents always as parents particularly learn to appreciate effort and not results the world acknowledges people for their results if this child wins the first prize in certain such competition then everybody praises if he participates he struggles he puts in lot of effort but for various reasons out of his control other people are perform better and he does not get a prize your role as a parent should be to appreciate the effort i saw how many hours of training you did i saw what was your standard 3 months back and in 3 months of practice how high you came uh, up i saw your determination that even though there are chances that there are so many more qualified or more practiced people you still did not give up you participated if you do that believe me you, the children will not only grow up to achieve but also to be autonomous and independent and to have that self confidence and that self esteem Achana says, "I know of a uh, particular uh, person who craves appreciation. Is it possible that when people are deprived of being appreciated in their earlier years, that they want to be appreciated all the time and also want to, uh, uh, you know, blow their own uh, trumpet? Blowing their own trumpet is done by a few people who are a little egoistic. I won't go into that uh, right now. But yes, that's why I gave you the example of this gentleman who's already 55 years old." but his memories from his early days when he, they lost their father and their mother was so important to them and she worked so hard to bring these uh, children up and yet you know he felt that my mother does not appreciate me i want my mother to appreciate me because she has done so much for me i want to make her proud of me so anything and everything and many many of these uh, uh, things do make a difference niti says i am my own cheerleader three cheers four cheers for niti for being her own uh, cheer leader i really you know appreciate and that's what i was uh, uh, telling you uh, about what happened to surekha's uh, question that disappeared i just know so yes surekha says when we shiver in terror because someone disapproves us we magnify their judgment and minimize our worth this is self sabotage very strong words but i acknowledge that sujata yes rekha how can we stop being prisoners of their personality this is a little extreme case i was only talking about you know craving for appreciation but here is somebody who disapproves us so strongly that we start believing that yes i am worthless i cannot do anything i am not good at this i am not good at uh, uh, that and that is when we fall into this trap it's a long story of you know picking yourself up and coming up depending on who the person is how much the influence of that uh, person is 
was earlier and was now. So I don't have a general answer to Sureka's question. But yes, I do feel, firstly, that there is a need, whatever may be your status in life now or whatever may have the changes or age that has um, uh, come in, we should overcome that. And I agree with Satyan that there is always some previous baggage that's responsible for this craving. Of course, there's no doubt about it. Otherwise, when I'm doing well and when I'm getting appreciation from other people, why is it that my mind always goes back to this one person and says, I want appreciation only from that, these things? And I also agree with the caution that Sonia has given. We should cheer ourselves, but not boasting in front of others. Those are egoistic people, you know, who want to all the time show off that I'm so great and this and that. And not touching upon that topic or those type of people. They are far and few in between. When you come across such boasting people, give them a minute or two, you know, pat them on the back and say, great, keep, keep it up and then push off uh, from there and do what Alice does. Always tap myself standing in front of the mirror. The various ways of giving yourself positive strokes, but do keep giving uh, that. Roshan says, Joan, who was a stranger a few days back, has become my good friend. Not only she, but her three loving doggies, Diana, Lanan, and Rihanna, are in love with me. Do not wait for your family to appreciate and acknowledge your worth. There are many people who truly care for you. Classic example that Roshan has uh, given us. You don't know from where who will turn up. Like I mentioned about Dhanwadi horse, here are three dogs who are appreciating you, who are loving you, who are caring for you, when you are not their master. They didn't even know you till a few days back. But they are giving you that unconditional love. Don't neglect such people, be it human beings, be it animals, for the sake of craving that, no, my mother only should love me or my spouse only should appreciate uh, me. Yasmin says, I come across parents who compare their children. I understood from today's session, it's wrong to do. I'll keep a check. Yes, Yasmin, please be very, very careful about comparing uh, children with uh, each other or with anybody else for that uh, matter. Appreciate the child, even scold the child when the child is doing something wrong. But do not compare the child with anybody uh, else. Noor says, people who are jealous deliberately don't appreciate the deserve just to belittle them, ignore them. Very true. If you really sit down among the points that I gave you, you can even add what Noor has told you. That this person who, despite my achievement, despite my wanting and asking for appreciation and not giving it to me, is this person by chance jealous? I have come across a lot of people who are jealous and that's why they hold back. They are scared to appreciate somebody's capabilities or achievements or whatever. Because they feel then that person will become, you know, high and I will be left uh, uh, behind. Somya is uh, asking, when we try to pick ourselves up, how do we take criticism constructively? That's exactly what I told uh, Sureka also, Somya, that this is a topic by itself. When you feel that the not only lack of appreciation, but it's gone to the extent where the person is putting you down all the time. We need to think, you know, how to get out of it. And that's a topic by itself. Either individually you can get in touch with me. I think by now I've been repeating this a number of times. I'm never too busy to respond to people either in person or in phone or by email. Please feel free to send your query and your doubts to my personal email ID, which is flashing right now on the screen, alikwaja50 at gmail.com. Uh, come or come over or call me. We'll have a detailed discussion on these very, very serious issues which sometimes people go through and we need to do something uh, about uh, uh, it. Okay. Uh, Suma says, uh, I feel our thoughts and actions of prioritizing someone else than oneself in our life is the root cause. Actually, some of we are trained to prioritize somebody else. You know, our culture has been such, unlike the Western world, where we are constantly told as children, don't be selfish, don't be greedy, don't all the time think of yourself. You have to think of others. You have to respect elders. You have to take care of your old people. You have to take care of your children. You have so many responsibilities. Somewhere along the line, if that gets too ingrained in our mind, that is when we start craving for appreciation from others. 
Surekha says our vulnerability becomes the fertile soil for manipulation. Absolutely right. We set ourselves up for emotional blackmail. How can we help our counselees end this freedom struggle and claim their emotional independence? In one nutshell, if you want me to reply how you can help your counselees or anybody who is going through this is to help them to build up their self-esteem. <coughs> More details, as I said, we can discuss individually, we can talk over it. But whenever I find that there is some friend, some counselee who is going through what Surekha mentioned just now, the first thing that I would do is to slowly, gently, but persistently help that person build up his or her self-esteem. When the person feels more complete, from within oneself and that comes out of the last point also that I gave you in that seven point that I gave giving yourself positive affirmations if we look I want only from that person so these are the tips which I'm amazed that Sunita caught up so fast and she has uh, typed it and she has made it into a slide. This was done instantly right now. I had not given this to her earlier. So within minutes, she has made this. Here you are at a glance. I'll read it out again to you. Why do I want appreciation only from that person? Am I incomplete without them? Are they too critical of me? Second one, does his appreciation practically help me in any way is it what we call as constructive appreciation and that gives me some boost yes i told you no there are exceptions there are teachers or gurus or mentors yes when he appreciates me i know that i'm on the wrong uh, right track and that increases my motivation and therefore so that's why i want his appreciation more than anybody else am i losing out on others because of this one of the very strong um, points ask others who appreciate why they appreciate get a critical review from them so that reinforces that they are not flattering me they are not saying it just because they are my friends or they care for uh, me and fifth one if you stop craving for this person's appreciation the chance of getting actual appreciation increases you have to be patient but try it out and see in the long run it actually works in many cases you can never guarantee anything in human behavior but yes it does help and finally appreciate yourself give yourself positive strokes and you will not need or you will not crave for getting appreciation or acknowledgement from this uh, um, person noor says i have reached a point of saturation where i don't care for anybody's appreciation now i am doing things to make myself happy definitely do that noor do things to make yourself happy but i was a little concerned because you used the word saturation there's no saturation in this and saturation gives me a little you know warning bell is it that i am doing it to escape from others is in which case i may i'm not talking about no specifically but i may somebody may stop acknowledging appreciation from anybody want to withdraw in the shell as we uh, said no that also is not a good thing we are all social beings we all need to interact we all need to feel belong. We need to feel connected to uh, people. That's equally uh, important. So this is what we keep working on. Whatever I have been saying, as you know, is not rocket science. It is not something which is brought out from some philosophies or some great textbooks or something. It is always that, you know, the personal touch the personal in interactions that uh, we learn from any time and every time I interact with human beings, including the Saturday sessions when I get some questions, when I get some comments, sometimes when I even get disagreements from people. These are all wonderful learnings for uh, me. Whenever I get this, I know that, yes, I'm on the uh, right uh, track. Ha. Appreciation changes. Uh, Time to time, maturity also matters and the mind set many facts also we have to take into account. I agree with uh, that. That's another thing that I want you to keep in uh, mind that from time to time, 
our needs change our wants change there's a difference between what we need and what we uh, uh, want so when our needs keep changing when our wants keep changing go along with that don't be complacent today we have had this session yasmin hats off to you i all have also learned to appreciate my growth and try to be better by every single uh, day that's how it should be it's a continuous process there is no one thing oh now i got this enlightenment this saturday when i went through this thing and from now on i am going to be a different person every day give yourself a high five in the mirror says anu i agree with her uh, small things but it does make a difference sometimes people think that that is very childish i don't think so i think a simple thing like for my own satisfaction for my boosting myself uh, up yes harsha appreciating ourselves too much is definitely bad see it's very simple doing anything too much is bad isn't it eating too much is bad no food is essential to life i can't live without food but if i eat too much it is bad isn't it so that's how it goes that anything done beyond can be bad surekha says can seeking approval from others turn addictive where we give them too much power and control how do we reclaim our power? it's that's exactly what i had said i had used a different word called obsession so when wanting appreciation from this person becomes an obsession obviously there could be i'm not saying always but there could be a danger that we give them too much power and control over our lives so we nip it in the bud do not allow it to come to that point start off by reducing and saying yes while i do love this person while i do feel this person is important uh, to me we want to i want to ensure that i start pulling away so prevention is better than uh, uh, cure that's how this uh, uh, you know thing uh, goes from uh, time to time all these are very interesting very simple and day to day uh, things yes as uma said you know day to day uh, uh, thing yeah yasmin try to validate the authenticity of my smile in front of the mirror so that i don't uh, uh, fake it azu says i'm learning to deal with a narcissistic person in my life and saturday sessions yes azu it's a continuous process more so when unfortunately i am in a very close relationship with somebody who is narcissistic is a very strong word but yes it does describe how a person who becomes very self centered very selfish and starts becoming cruel to others only to see to his or her own you know well being it is very difficult if you have to be in a close relationship with somebody learning to deal is again a continuous process i'm glad that you are doing it please continue with your uh, efforts somewhere somehow you will find that life will get uh, uh, better in fact uh, next thursday uh, we have this wonderful classroom session it's not going to be uh, online uh, next thursday 10 o'clock i'm going to be speaking about understanding men because how often i've come across women who you know they look straight at me and say you know dr ali all these men are horrible no i don't know where to look because that's what she is telling me and 50% of the population of the world knocked off just because she is not getting along with her father or husband or whoever it is so that session please those of you who are in bangalore and you feel like it get out you know that third wave fourth wave all that is overcome let's start socializing which is a very important aspect of life seeing different type of people understanding that there is a life beyond lockdowns and covids and all that and particularly i'm telling those people who have already got themselves vaccinated so you know that comparatively you are much much safer out so join us on thursday we'll have a cup of tea we'll interact we'll see what best can be done and of course the saturday programs continue as usual topics are you know told to you in advance i try as far as possible to take up topics which are of direct human interest and i'm open to suggestions also 
So please send in your uh, suggestions for topics if something is important, like how two, three people had asked certain things, which I said we are not taking it up in today's uh, session. Like that, maybe we can think of other uh, sessions where we can take up these topics which are directly concerning you and which are relevant to you. So then see you again next week. Until then, bye-bye.